I remember, we got to go back, it's now what, seven, seven and a half years mm -hmm. to the start of the accountability system. There were going to be these new creatures uh, providing a sort of political buffer between the civil service and the great unwashed, uh, LegCo, uh, uh, and the general public. Mm -hmm. And this was to, in part, large part, to preserve the neutrality of the civil service. So that behind the scenes, the civil service would be producing options. They would set out clearly the pros and cons of each option, but then the final decision would be made by one of these new ministers. And this, uh, this, would pr this way, the civil service would be protected because if a, if a policy became uh, recognized as having been erroneous, then the minister could be changed, but the civil service, which had implemented it in good faith, uh, would not be uh, tarred uh, by it. And it was a, a recognition of the fact that Hong Kong was becoming more politicized, and uh, perhaps in the past, public acceptability had been taken into account rather late in the policy-making process, mm -hmm. and the feeling was that public acceptability should come into the equation much earlier. Mm -hmm. So, so good reasons. And I'm, you know, I, as everyone here knows, I'm very pro-China and very pro-Hong Kong. Um, believe it or not, I have a soft spot for the government as well, mm -hmm. and I, I actually quite sympathetic to the. Uh, rationale for creating these new uh, political posts. Uh, my concern has been with the way it's actually been uh, implemented. And um, I think inevitably in the first wave, that is back in 2002, quite a number of talents came in from outside the civil service to fill these uh, new posts. But I think inevitably also a number of the new ministers were drawn from the civil service. And I think in the early days that was uh, inevitable. Otherwise you wouldn't, wouldn't have anyone, you couldn't get things started. But especially with the creation of the deputy post, the undersecretaries, mm -hmm. it was quite clearly the objective was to groom uh, mm -hmm. new talents, that gradually the, this, uh, this would be a separate cadre of people, some of whom might originally have been civil servants, but they would retire in due course, and by then you would have developed this whole separate cadre of, of political appointees. Um, and uh, I think one of the recent developments which I found most disconcerting mm -hmm. has been the use of the deputy minister posts to appoint a serving civil servant mm -hmm. and uh, a retired civil servant. It's not a reflection on either of, of those person. people. But it simply it seems to me that this totally undermines the original uh, rationale for having the system. Because uh, I've actually brought with me a copy of the Civil Service Code. Uh, this will be uh, interesting because people have said, have said I have no clue what's in it. And anyway, <laughs> and anyway I'm not a very good civil servant. Uh, well, they only write for the next month. Because I'm, uh, <laughs> but the... I'm worried about the relationship between these political appointees and the civil service. The code, um, read with kind eyes, uh, is very clear on this. It makes it clear that the ministers are at the top mm -hmm. of the tree. Not only must the civil servants um, uh, present everything to them, work very hard, but once a decision has been made by the ministers, the civil servant is enjoined to immediately implement without hesitation, without reservation. There are specific clauses in here which, if you read them with an unkind pair of spectacles on, would actually be quite insulting. But mm. uh, leave, leave it on one side. I think undermining it all is the idea that the civil servants, the civil servant, should speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. That is, behind closed doors, the civil servant has got to give full and frank advice and saying what the pluses and minuses of each option are. And you talk about, in paragraph 3.5 of the code, for example, about objectivity. There's also references here to integrity. Um, and then you've got, again, in, it's repeated, in case you're in any doubt, six, paragraph 6.1 talks about civil servants, shall serve the government of the day with integrity and to the best of their ability. 
shall follow the directives and work priorities determined by principal officials. All of this is very, very clear. That is, we now have a superior lay layer on top of the civil service as well. It's not just in between, it's now mm -hmm. quite clearly on top. Um, which uh, is, is spelled out in, in paragraphs 5.6, uh, they must support the ministers, assist them as necessary. In paragraph 5.7, they shall not seek to obstruct or frustrate a policy or decision, etc., or delay its implementation, and so on. And the reporting lines are interesting. The, uh, the permanent secretary, who is a civil servant, in reporting on the performance of his deputies, his own civil service subordinates, is specifically allowed or indeed encouraged to consult the political appointees in the Bureau about how that civil servant uh, performed. Now I start to worry at this point um, about the performance appraisal aspect and my concern about the recent appointments is, is if you like, doubled at this point. If these new political appointed posts are going to be regarded as almost promotion posts, potential promotion posts for civil servants, then it seems to me that the, obje the original objective has been completely discarded. Mm. If you know, there's a carrot and a stick here. Mm. If you give the minister advice that he doesn't want to hear, mm -hmm. he's going to comment on your performance. It's allowed. It's here in the code, and uh, your own chances of becoming, in due course, a minister or a deputy minister will have melted away. But if you give the minister advice that he wants to hear, then your performance appraisal as a civil servant will be better, and your own chances of being elevated to deputy minister or minister will have been enhanced. And that now seems to be almost a career route, especially, as I said, especially disappointing when posts that were created in order to groom a new generation of talent, a whole new cadre of people are being filled by a civil servant and uh, a retire, recently retired civil servant. Mm. 